Pathophysiology Pharmacy, Migraine Headaches by Jacqueline Jones. Patient Presentation, Sarah, 34-year-old, female, presents in a urology clinic for a follow-up of migraines, headaches. <clears throat> she is a secretary who recently returned back to work full-time on a new job. She's a mother and a caregiver of two boys, ages three and five. She reports she used to have two headaches per month. Migraines have increased to four to five per month. Occurs in the morning, more frequently around her menses. Headache evolves quickly within one hour. Involves severe throbbing pain, unilateral and temporal in distribution. Headache preceded by an aura consists of nausea and pastel lights flashing throughout her visual field. Phot photophobia occurs frequently. Vomiting occurs with extreme headaches. Headache attacks lasting three days, causing miswork times one day, both times one day a month, causing increased productivity decreased productivity at home and work by half percentage of her norm. Downtime includes recruit, retreating to a dark room, avoiding all noises. She rates her pain level <clears throat> at a seven to eight on the headache scale of one to 10. Three months ago, her last visit, she was prescribed nortriptan 2.5 milligrams orally to be taken at the onset of her headache. This medication has not been effective for half of her migraines for the past three months. Nortriptan was replaced by car, by care care for God. Care for <clears throat> Her past history, social history. She had a history of migraines with R since age of 29. Both parents is positive for migraines. The mother has a history of hypertension and type 2 diabetes. And patients started back smoking three months ago due to her stress. Migraine with the aura. Migraines with aura is also called the classic migraine. It is a headache that strikes after along with the sensory disturbances called aura. These disturbances can include flash of light, blind spots and other vision, vision changes or ting, tingling in her hand or face. Migraines with aura, the classic migraine pathophysiology theory, vascular theory proposes that the aura preceding migraine is caused by vasoconstriction of inter, intracranial vas, vas, vessels and vasodilation of the affected vessels results in the typical vascular headache pain that thrives in unison with the pulse. Migraines are three times more prevalent in women and are associated with estrogen levels. It's usually low estrogen levels. 60% of women migraineous, migraine nurse report menstrual association migraines and seven to 14 have migraines exclusively with menses. The problems identification <clears throat> is her drug theory. She was on abortive medication a simple analgesics like um, NSAIDs, which is Motrin, and uh, narcotics that put her out of commission for several days. Midrin was non effective. Um, Nortriptan is minimal effective. And her prophylactic valporic, valporic acid 500 milligrams daily she uh, reports a weight gain 
propranolol, 20 milligrams twice a day, increased episodes of dizziness and lightheadedness. The patient self discontinued it, and she's on mal depression for eight months. Well, buterol, SR, she self uh, discontinued that three months ago also. And she is on Zoloft, 50 milligrams at bedtime. She started that one month ago. <clears throat> the clinical information <clears throat> consists with migraine diagnosis is a family history of both parents positive for migraines. Patient's history of aura migraine since the age of 29. Patient has a Midas questionnaire score of 33 with a grade four severe disability and the patient problems has been caused or exacerbated of her drug therapy by stopping her medications abruptly albuter albuterin discontinued by the patient three months ago with a mouth with a which is a mild um, antidepressant, which could also help her stop smoking and decrease her stress level. Propranolol to, pre pre to prevent blood pressure from being elevated, because when she arrived at the clinic, her blood pressure was elevated. The goals of the treatment is to minimize the impact of migraine headaches, prevent the prevention of migraine headaches, meaning she needs to be taught how to look for her, what, find out what triggers her, her headaches, and minimizing adverse ref, uh, effects. And one thing I looked at is since she, uh, since her um, norotriptan is not working well, I looked at naproxen, uh, naproxen for her but the one with the sodium, which it would be 825 milligrams PO at the onset and 200 to 250 milligrams in three to four hours. I kind of looked at that one because she doesn't want a narcotic because she says the narcotics put her out. And then also it is um, an anti-inflammatory. So that would help with some of the inflammation. And patient is currently taking Regalin, which she has an order for that Regalin 10 milligrams PO at the onset of her migraine. And that will help with her nausea. So in migraine classification of medications, there's a lot of them. There's simple analgesics, that would be your aspirin, your Tylenol, your NSAIDs, your Motrin, and then you have a middle range, and that's a combination <clears throat> product of aspirin and or Tylenol, and it would be the uh, Fluorinol or the Fluorset. And I didn't do any, either one of those because since it was a mild range, I didn't know if it would be really effective maybe to put her out like the, the other analgesics, uh, narcotics were. So a mal-range analgesic is commonly used, like the opiates, and they would have like coating along with the combination of aspirin or Tylenol. The ergot derivatives, and that would be with the DHE. And then you would have your antieptics migraine management, and that is for the nausea. You have beta blockers that will be the first line of therapy. You will have your trip, tryptocyclic antidepressants. You will have your epileptic. And in uh, when you use the epileptic one, that is a form of anti-seizure medication where it works almost the same as for the migraine. And, and then you also have the Botox. And with that Botox, that um, that treatment would be two treatments, two injections the first time, and you'll be doing it every 12 weeks.
Oh. And bo uh, Botox is a neurotoxic to protein produced by a bacteria. And one treatment session is every 12 weeks. The injection is at your trigger points. They have up to 31 uh, trigger points, but they would use the trigger point where the pain is at that time. Neurotoxic proteins, which is a poisonous or destructive to the nerve's tissues, Botox works by blocking the nerve activity in the muscles, which leads to a temporary reduction in muscle activity can effectively weaken a muscle for three to four months. It blocks certain chemical signals, mainly, mainly, mostly those responsible for muscle contraction. And here's uh, the migraine triggers. And these trigger factors are the ones what would trigger the patient's headaches. Like my patient, she was complaining of um, the bright lights, the pastel lights, and that would be her environment. That's why she goes into a dark room for, to retreat. And also the uh, tobacco smoking. Food is another one. You look at a lot of caffeine, a, a lot of nuts, uh, alcohol. And alcohol, they really look at white wines and, of course, chocolate. And the lifestyle is you got to get enough rest, enough sleep. You have to decrease your stress level and, and not fasting or being hungry for a long period of time. Hormonal, it would be the menses or the menopause, oral contraceptives, or hormone replacement therapy. And that's because um, the estrogen level usually drops. Medication is analgesic, the error got, got to, main, to mind, overuse, and antihypertension Histamine 2s blockers, and that would be your your cimetidine and your renidine, which is tagament and Zantac. And the patient current medication list when she presented at the clinic is nortriptan 2.5 milligrams, one tablet PO at the onset of her migraine. Repeat the dose of 2.5. PO every four hours in partial response or if the headache returns. A maximum dose of five milligrams per 24 hours. And since this patient's uh, migraines have increased and she can only do 20, uh, uh, two tablets in 24 hours, that wouldn't be enough because she might have to, she might have more than one migraine within that week and she wouldn't be able to use that medication. So we were gonna swap that medication out and give her naproxen, sodium. And then she's uh, she already had the regular order and she would be taken out for the nausea for onset of her migraine. And then the, uh, the val, val valproic acid 500 milligrams PO is at bedtime and that would be her preventative one that she's taking <coughs> excuse me and then also she takes Zoloft an antidepressant uh, 50 milligrams by mouth at bedtime and she has no known history of allergies the natural treatment the natural treatment medications like magnesium, vitamin B2, and uh, one medication she, well, one herbal that she was concerned about, one was the butter burr and also the fever few. The fever few would be the one that would be recommended for her to use 
is because with the fever few, it would have so it, it affects the cognitive behavior therapy and relaxation therapy are frequently effective with migraines, occipital nerve stimulator. It may be helpful in patient who has headaches or retract over the uh, retractory. To other forms of treatment, they both can be dangerous due to uh, liver extraction from the butterbur, the root, for over 16 weeks, it can be effective. But the, the fever few cannot be taken with blood thinners, Coumadin, Plavix, or aspirin. And a lot of the migraine patients are on some type of aspirin derivative. And that could break, it could break down by, the, it could be broken down by the liver and muscle tensions and liver disease can occur. And that was some of the side effects also the many uh, that would include the diarrhea, the liver disease and the headaches. And if you're taking it for a headache, I don't, I don't see why you would want to take it if one of the side effects are headaches. The microleaf is commonly used herbal supplement containing the fever few, river flavoring, magnesium, and other vitamin vitamins over the counter. But one thing about uh, patients taking over the counter medication, they need to consult with a healthcare provider first because some of the the chemicals that's in some of the herbs might not work with the regular medication that they're already on. Migraine Disability Assessment Questionnaire, the MIDAS. This questionnaire was developed to measure the effective, the effective headaches that have an, a person's daily, that involves a patient's daily function. The MIDAS takes into account the past three months and is composed of five questions. They're simple and they're short. The best ways to use this test is to take the test at home and then take the re bring the results in to your healthcare provider. It makes it easy for them to assess um, your disability and it's not used as a substitute for information your doctor may, may give to you, but it can also be a way to evaluate the severity of headaches and how well you're, you are treating them. It's, simp it's a simple way for you to take a more active role in your headache and migraine health. These questions are used to determine your score, which then is a match to the level of disability and also what type of medication you would be taking. And the outcome, you want to minimize the migraine attack and the impact and you want to avoid triggers, but the patient needs to be taught how what triggers her headaches and how to prepare for it. And she needs to get proper rest and sleep, try yogurt to reduce her stress, stop smoking. Um, there's a lot of lifestyle changes that we can make even with your diet, maybe she's eating chocolates, caffeine, you know, drinking coffee or whatnot. So you would use those too. And some of the things that we would need to manage the patient for, one thing is very important and that's keeping a headache diary. So then that way, when you bring it back to the provider, that's the way for them to determine which way they should go next with your medication regimen. And before you start, um, before you start to look at a new regimen, you want to also go over, if you have any suspicions that a patient might be overusing their medications, 
you can uh, that can also help you determine it too. You want to monitor their blood pressure at least every two weeks. You want to monitor their labs, the liver function, and their complete blood count. The liver function is because of the type of medications they're taking, you know, like Tylenol and some of the narcotics that could affect the liver function. And a complete blood count. And one thing about this patient, too, was her alkaline phos was 35, and the normal starts at 38. So when you look in there, it's kind of hard to determine if it was because of her diet or if it was because of her stopping her medications abruptly. Preventative therapy, you want to look at how severe is she incapacitated and abortive medication, the primary goals, and the medication overdose. And medication overdose seems to be a real big uh, issue in these patients because the pain, you know, when the, when the headaches come more frequent, then they take the medication more frequent. It's not something they're purposely doing, but it does happen. <clears throat> and patient education, you want to be sure you discuss the information related to the overall plan. Make sure they understand that how to take their medications. And then when you develop the drug plan, you want to reinforce for them not to just stop their medication abruptly, but notify their primary caregiver to uh, let them know that the, the side effects of the medication. Patient education is key to the success of the treatment. <clears throat> now you want to teach the patient to be aware of the triggers. And also, maybe she could plan to have her boys cared for by a family member or a husband. It didn't say she had one, but someone in the family to take them, maybe since she's down for like three days, maybe three days and make realistic expectations of herself, make small goals, one thing at a time, not everything all about, and, <clears throat> and make sure she understands the importance of not taking OTC medications that is in, not, not in the plan when she leaves the office because all the medications doesn't mix with the medication she's taking and there could be some serious side effects. Thank you.